every week in Farmers Weekly. They have a section called Newsmaker. So naturally on the Newsmaker show on Mondays, we will of course highlight who the newsmaker is. And what a wonderful way to celebrate her tenor as the president of Rural Woman is Fiona Gawa stepping down after her two terms uh, ended in late November. She's joining us now from Queenstown of all places, Fiona. What takes you down there? Oh, a bit of a holiday, actually, to start with. A working holiday, I I think, is more the term. Um, I've been invited down to the Fairlight Station, Fairlight Foundation, to meet the new interns uh, happening down there because I sort of did a little bit of work for them, which is really exciting. So I thought, right, let's pack the kids up and we'll bring them down and we're going to have five days down here looking around central Otago and showing them the highlights and the sights and uh, introducing them to the real high country of, of New Zealand. Oh, Best part of the country, goodness, I've already seen Golden Bay, as I've already seen everywhere. <laughs> but everywhere in New Zealand. I is. know. Yeah. It's hard to find a favourite. It's like a child, isn't it? We were, it is. So, yeah, licorice all sorts. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Now let's talk about the long history your family have had with rural women, not just your own. No, so my uh, both my grandmothers were members way back, and my actually uh, my dad's mother um, was one of the founding members of the Tutanui branch up in Martin. So long history there, and then of course my mother was very involved for a long time, and used to drag us along as, as children to all sorts of events, and uh, we used to get involved and have lots of fun, and um, so we really grew up as part of the Rural Women New Zealand, well in those days as Women's Division, part of the family and uh, got to know some amazing women through that and the role models that I've had, uh, especially around the importance of community. I've certainly learned from those women. Mm. The, the interesting thing I took, of course, from the headline is that uh, Rural Woman is more than a tea and scone brigade. Um, and certainly in my close association with you over your term, I've seen that myself. But what did you actually mean by that? Well, I guess it's because, you know, we do so much more, you know, like um, Rural Woman New Zealand is not just about uh, being a stay at home and baking and, and looking after it's all about the support we can do so it's the social support networking that we do which is really really important um, the being the the balanced voice and the respected voice for issues in rural communities has been a huge part of what we've been doing since 1925 when we first formed so it's really important that uh, people actually recognize that uh, how much work we've done for our communities in that way and it's also the charitable work that we do right throughout the country and actually when I look at what we do as rural New Zealand I often talk about it being a grassroots to global um, impact that we have right from you know our, our neighbours next door right through to the work that we do on an international stage. So it certainly is a huge amount of work that goes in and so many different uh, ways that we do it, but certainly very much that that being that social support networking and that being the voice and the charitable work are the three main focuses we look at. And I, I want to also highlight about the strong work you do uh with um, in terms of policy uh, and governance, and for um, with them particularly your close association with Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, I was at the mighty morning tea shout. Thank you very much for your invitation, and I must. Ca- uh, ca- so congratulate you on one of her very strong uh, comments she made that she would not have been able to get through a lot of uh, things in, in her term as pre- Prime Minister if it wasn't for her association with rural women. And I think that's a really important thing that we do have really strong relationships with a lot of the ministries, with the ministers, uh, so that we can support them. And it's not just about us saying, look, we're not quite sure about what you're doing. It's actually saying, look, um, we've got a concern. Let's help you get this through. Let's help you sort out the situation. Have you rural proof that, gender proof that? Can we help you do that? And I think that's been a big part of the relationship we've had with a lot of the ministers, the ministries, the ministers, and with the prime ministers going, how can we help you overcome these issues? And it's very much about those relationships and partnerships that we've had. And it's been fantastic. Um, what we've been doing the last few years around those partnerships and the relationships and the difference that our voices had and uh, where we've been heard. Mm. It's been been amazing. Congratulations on everything that you have achieved and, uh, and of course, incoming Jill Naylor going into the role of president. What are the major opportunities when uh, women are welcomed more and more to the table in rural New Zealand? 
Well, I think there's so many opportunities because, you know, as I often talk about that, and we we all talk about the importance that women are often the, we are the influencers, we are the decision makers, and we need to be around that table. And uh, being involved in organisations like Rural Women New Zealand or whether it's Dairy Women's Network, Young Farmers, Federated Farmers, it gives us that ability to learn how to have a voice and make sure that we are being heard around the table, whether it be in our own businesses or whether it be in community organisations or right up into the ministry section because I think it's uh, we need to have that voice because as women we do tend to look at things slightly different to what our, our male counterparts do so really important to have that balanced um, decision making being made in those uh, policies yeah. so yeah no it's really good opportunity for women and uh, for those women that are looking for leadership roles governance roles organisations like ours can give them you know the opportunity to have a go at them Tell me about some of your highlights. I see that you remember all the people that you met, of course, the Queen of Malaysia uh, and Camilla Parker Bowles. Yes. Uh, yeah, so um, the Governor-General is our patron, which has um, been really, really great to have her. And uh, when the um, they were over here recently, uh, we had a afternoon tea up in uh, Government House in Auckland and a lot of the uh, Governor-General's, uh, I guess, um, people that she works with and the organisations got invited to go and have a high tea with uh, her ex- with uh, Camilla Parker Bowles and it was quite an experience actually, so getting to speak in front of all these amazing women as well as her, so yeah, that was, that was fantastic. But there are so many highlights, I think, in my term. Um, certainly the Mighty Morning T-shirt was a lot of fun that we had back in June, that was sort of like my swan song. Mm-hmm. Um, going to the United Nations and being the voice for rural women and girls for New Zealand was was amazing. But it's been meeting the people and the relationships and the opportunities right around the country and, as I say, right around the globe has been – it's hard to say which highlights have been the best one, but I've just loved working with people right through and the opportunities and the experiences have been fantastic. The challenge going forward for rural women, and you yourself have a 16-year-old daughter, uh, Fiona, is encouraging young females to come through into rural women. What what more could the organisation do? Uh, so that's a big piece of what we're doing is looking how can we support them and and what they're doing. How can we make sure that. Uh, they have got the opportunity to have that leadership skills, that, that training, um, learn about the importance that they that they know that they can have a voice on the issues. And I think that's a big thing is actually because our young ones and our young women are really wanting to have a voice. So here's an opportunity to actually practice using that voice and the issues that affect our young ones. I mean, it's really important that we look after them and we hear that voice. So it's all about that. And it's actually going, how can we support them on their leadership journey, whether it's in business, whether it be in community or however it want to be. And I think um, because we've been there, I always talk about us often being the aunties and being that mentors for a, a young ones coming through because we've been there, done that. How can we support them and go, look, hey, this is how I've done it or have you thought about these different situations and um, give them the opportunities and celebrate what they bring because the young ones certainly do have a huge voice and a huge potential. And I look at the young leaders coming through in New Zealand and I think, well, if that's what we've got, you know, the opportunities in New Zealand, we, we're just going to do so well. Oh, thank you so much for everything that you've done for the sector. Oh. And I know that this will continue ongoing because, yeah, <laughs> Fiona, <laughs> you love to be involved in helping wherever you can in the yeah. community. We all be, we see you pop up next, do you think? Or is it time for a bit of a break with the family? Uh, uh, we're having a bit of a break. I'm literally over Christmas, New Year. It was absolutely amazing not having to answer emails and check emails. Yeah. Uh, we're at the beach. Of course, we don't have internet out there very much and no, no cell phone coverage, which is really great. Uh, I'm not sure where where it's going to be, and I keep saying to people, look, I'm now in the process. I've had a couple of months off. I'm going to start looking at what the opportunities are and see what's out there and see what I can get offered. Um, I'm, I'm very involved in our local surf club. Uh, not only like I'm a lifeguard, I'm an official and an instructor, and now um, 16-year-olds are driving IRB boats, so we're racing around the country supporting them, which is absolutely amazing fun. Uh, so that's part of what I'm going to be doing as well, but looking for other opportunities because, uh, yes, some paid employment at some stage would be really great yes. to to get on to. <laughs> hey, I was just thinking, um, 
You've got to be almighty proud of our last guest today's show, Megan Whitehead, uh, oh, being so passionate yes. about female sharing as yes. well. Sorry, I've got to sneak <laughs> this in. How cool oh, is this? so exciting. I know. Um, so I was at last January, I was at the record that the four women um, set at uh, Turing, a rural woman New Zealand sponsored part of that. And it was so exciting to be there with the four girls, for the four women when they set that four, four stand record. And to see Megan coming through and uh, Emily Welsh lives just down the road. And so it's really exciting that um, Emily was there to be able to support Megan through and um, you know, cheer her on as well. So, so exciting to see this woman coming through and uh, Wow, what talent. And you know, these are world-class athletes that we're watching and we should be celebrating them more and more because, you know, for women, it's all about their technique. It's all about their, their strength. And, uh, man, she's got great technique. She's got great potential to go a long way. So well done, Megan. Oh, I had to get that wee bit in there. Yes. Oh, that, so exciting. Thank you so much, Fiona Gow, outgoing president of Rural Women New Zealand. 